So we've seen how we can use the workbook open event to trigger actions that we want to carry out every time a workbook is opened. In a similar vein, we have events that work on closing or saving a workbook that then effectively allow us to carry out other commands, other instructions in our VBA. So if we use the open close event template file that I've created, that's in your working folder, and go into the Visual Basic. We need the workbook code sheet. And if we want to add a piece of code that will be triggered by the before close event, we simply add that by choosing workbook and then before close. And we can remove the workbook open that is instilled by itself. So you'll see we have private sub workbook underscore before close and then we have cancel as boolean. So you can actually cancel the close event. So let's add in an are you sure box. That's a very simple little option that you might want to add in for when someone's going to close the file. So we need a message. We need to store the result of our are you sure box. So that will be an integer. And then we need to set the value for our message, which is, are you sure you want to leave? And then we run our MSG function and store the result in the result variable. So the result is going to be equal to MSG box. The prompt will be our message and the buttons will be PB OK cancel. Close brackets. And we use an if. So if the result is equal to VB no, then we set cancel equal to true, where cancel is our parameter. End if. So if we then return back to Excel, let's do a save as so that we leave our original file intact and we'll call this open close event close trigger. And then we attempt to close the file. So we get, are you sure you want to leave with an OK cancel box, but actually I need a yes, no box, not an OK cancel box. So let's go back into the VB8. So we need to reopen the file, enable macros. Here, where I've said what buttons I like, that must be a yes, no, because I'm actually checking for no. So you've got to watch for that. So VB, yes, no, are my button options. And then I'm checking to see if they've said no. If they say no, then we cancel out and we don't actually close the file. So back into the Excel, save, file, close. Are you sure you want to leave? Now we get a yes, no box. So if I say no, the action is canceled and I go nowhere. If I go back to close and I say yes, then I'm not canceled out of the procedure and the file closes. The result of that is now in the open close event, close trigger. We've used the event workbook underscore before close, and we're checking if they actually want to close with a yes, no. If we say no, then we cancel out. Now there is a slight problem with the before close event in that if I just put a little bit of text in there. So I close the file. I'm asked if I want to leave, but I say no because I want to stay. And fine, nothing happens. However, if I go to close, and say, yes, are you sure you want to leave? I'm then given the save and close dialog box because I haven't actually saved the file. And at this stage, I can cancel out. So I actually haven't closed. So you have to be a little bit careful about what you're actually asking that trigger to do. Because I've asked it to carry out some commands, making the assumption that once those commands are finished, we will be closed and the file will be put away. However, because the prompt for the save comes after that trigger, there is an option there for them to cancel out, which means that whatever my little trigger has been allowed to do might be defunct or not relevant. There is, however, another event that we could capture and do something with, 
and that's the before save event rather than the before close event. So inside our Visual Basic, we have the before close event, but we could have, let's go to the little workbook drop down and choose before save to create another trigger. And sometimes it's the before save trigger that you want to be using, and sometimes it's the before close trigger that you want to be using. Depends on the actions you're trying to carry out at the end. So in this case, what I'd like to do before save is actually update. You'll notice in the Excel, we've got a date slash time closed. Let's lose the high there. So I want to update the value in here. So I want to insert the closing date and time in B2. I would do that with sheets, the name of the sheet, which is log dot range cell I'm trying to affect, which is B2 dot value is now going to be equal to now. Now, just as we did before on the open, if I do that every time I save the file, it will overwrite the value that is already in B2. So what I need to do is actually effectively move everything down a row. And I can do that by saying row two, dot insert. So now we'll find that every time we save the file, we have a problem. And our error, schoolboy error, is caused by the fact that we've put row instead of rows. So we can click stop to reset the debugger. That will remove this yellow. We can then go back to Excel and continue with our save. So you can see it puts in today's date and time. And when I save again, it will do the same by inserting a row and effectively moving down the previous value. So that's by putting that on the save rather than the close. So as soon as the file is saved, a new date is inserted. So the file can remain open and effectively you're just topping that save up. The value in there will change. So these are two triggers that again work at the workbook level. They must be placed in the this workbook code sheet for whichever file you're dealing with. And the triggers can be used to carry out pretty much anything that you're able to do in VBA.